How do, everybody? And it is time for the Eurovision Song Contest semifinal number two reaction video from moi. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the performances, who made it into the grand final. That is coming up this Saturday, May the 15th, 14th, May 14th, sorry. And um, the running order of the grand final as well, too. So stick around. Lots to discuss. Here we go. Konnichiwa minaboku, I Jeremy das Yoroshiku onigaishimasu. And it is semi-final two for the Eurovision Song Contest 2022. Lots of twos in there. And uh, it was a magnificent show. I just finished watching it. Didn't get a chance to watch it live this year like I did last year because I was stuck having to go to work. But I did get to watch it um, after the fact because thankfully they posted on YouTube, which is amazing. And I am in Canada. They don't block it here. Um, and I, I would hope they wouldn't considering that apparently next year we might be a guest or, or we'd be allowed to perform there as a guest country kind of like Australia and Israel. Although Israel's been in there for a long time. So, but anyway, I digress. Let's jump into it. Uh, this semifinal, I figured, was actually going to be uh, a harder one to participate in, um, in terms of, there was just a lot of really strong songs I felt, uh, compared to the first semifinal. Again, this is basically based on my own personal opinion. And, uh, you can look a few videos back to see what my pr predictions were for semifinal one, semifinal two, and go from there. Um, right off the bat, I've said before, my top seven are France and Spain kind of between the two, like it could be either way. Um, Norway, Moldova, Austria, Albania, uh, Sweden, and Montenegro. Uh, I guess that's eight, really, if you think about it. Um, but we now know, of course, that Albania and Austria are not in it. Um, but we will continue from there. And we'll go in the running order. So there were 18 entries for the semifinal. And uh, we started things off with Finland, which of the four rock songs that we had between uh, Denmark... Bulgaria, Finland, and San Marino. This was probably my least favorite. Um, and uh, they actually made it into the grand final. Um, so it's the only rock song that made it into the grand final. So again, it kind of falls into that thing that I've said before, where the year before it was a rock song that won. And a lot of countries, they'll be like, oh, let's do a rock song. But traditionally, if you look at it over the history it's not very often that the same style of song wins two years in a row. It, I think it's probably happened before, and I just can't think of it off the top of my head, but I, I'm pretty sure Finland isn't going to win Eurovision this year. Who knows? I could be completely wrong. Uh, they're not high up there in the uh, bookie rankings, but... Um, so the song itself, they started off very strong, except it felt to me like the lead singer's vocals were dampened a little bit like not as powerful as as normal and he comes out in a big raincoat that's that's it looked like a, a giant yellow raincoat but it fit the yellow aesthetic that they had and i don't know what was going on with his hair <laughs> um it was like a dreadlocky type thing i don't know they had balloons everywhere it was uh it was a chaotic mess a little bit but uh, they did deliver a really strong opening a uh, great show overall so i could see why the public enjoyed them and i don't fault them for getting in at all i think that was it was pretty good we move on to israel which for me was actually a big head scratcher because i thought israel was going to make it in to the grand final and the performance was was very strong um i thought his dancing was fantastic um the, he was very very uh char charismatic uh I felt that, you know, they they worked the crowd, him and his dancers. Um, had that weird little thing with the the hosts, you know, when they had were announcing everybody that had gone and just opening up the voting lines. And maybe that could have struck people the wrong way. You know, he's waving the flag. But there's also the possibility that there is a slight little bit of politics involved here when you think about what's been going on with israel and palestine similar to russia ukraine things like that so i don't know i, I mean israel's made it in in the past i think they made it into the grand final last year but yeah um but like 
you know, uh, anyway, I, I mean, what's going on with Russia and Ukraine could have stirred up some some bad feelings as well with with in Israel. But who knows? I'm, I'm not sure what the thing was. He might have even like Israel might have just just missed making it into the grand final. We don't know the numbers just yet. So we'll see what happens. Serbia is up next. And wow, that was a nail biter at the announcements of the grand final entrance qualifiers because they hadn't said Serbia, but they did this yesterday too. Um, and or sorry, on Tuesday as well. And you know, I I, I knew Serbia was going to get in because she had everybody. Like Constructa had everybody. Betty Strava, Betty Strava, Betty Strava, Bit 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 Betty Strava. Like I was clapping along, so I you know I knew she was going to get in. It's a it's a great song. It's very interesting. I didn't like it that much at first, just full transparency when I first heard it. But as I started to understand what it was about, I realized it was a parody on things, and it really makes a, an interesting message out there about how you can have a healthy body, but you could have a, a messed up mind. You could have a healthy mind, and you can have a messed up body. So, um, And it talks about the faults of the medical system, and, and yeah, so there's a lot of layers to it, and I can appreciate that, so I'm very happy that they got in. Great, great performance. Azerbaijan, uh, very strong lyrics. They are singer, sorry, vocals. They had all of the strongest male vocalists in the second semifinal, and all of them made it on uh, into the finals. So I, I'm actually going to throw um, Estonia in there too. So there's like four, my top four uh, male, strongest male vocalists from Australia, Azerbaijan, Poland, and um, Estonia. So Azerbaijan's song, very interesting. Uh, he's got a great range, like the the lows to the highs and just all over the place. The performance kind of led a little bit to be desired. It was very drawn back a little bit, which is fine. Um, I think the song was called Fade to Black. And uh, but you know what? In all honesty, it was a pretty good performance. Um, he had the other guy with him on there and there were little little bits and pieces that kind of reminded me a little bit of Amans Zermerlo performance or a Sergei Lazarev performance from the past. Um, but still, it was just drawn back enough, and uh, the vocals pretty much did all the work. So good job, Azerbaijan. Georgia, as I s figured, didn't make it in. I did like the quirkiness of their performance. I did think it was it was interesting. It was engaging. Props to them for that. Uh, definitely more engaging than last year's Georgian entry, but they did not make it into the grand final, unfortunately. Um, it was it, it was almost like a parody entry. And so, some people have said before that it feels like that with Georgia. They don't really care. They're like honey badger. They don't give a shit. They just enter. They're just there to put to do their thing. But Remember, each country has to put a lot of money to send their delegations there. And by delegation, it's not just the performers. You've got everybody involved, your directors, your art directors, your people that are putting together the actual performance on the stage. And you've got your singers, of course. You've got, uh, it, there's a lot there. There's probably members of the government of some of these countries going, I don't know. These people are representing your country, right? So there's a lot of money. There's a lot of, of stuff involved with that. Malta. Malta put on a very strong performance. Um, Emma Muscat, I think is her name. Very good song. It, it, it's a gospel style song. What have we learned in the past? Gospel style songs don't seem to do that great, at least not in recent years. Last year, all four of them were knocked out. They didn't make it into the grand final. I mean, there was only one really this year and it's history repeating itself. But I still felt that she did a really, really good job. This poor woman has had to endure a lot of people saying that she doesn't belong on the Eurovision stage. She should be in junior Eurovision. But the song was a good song. She owned the stage. She was on that grand piano. Very Lady Gaga-esque is what I would say um, in terms of, of that. And, and just, I don't know, she had a great performance to herself she was off key off and on but again that's to be expected in any live performance by any singer and you know I'm not a professional by any means but I've done my time on stage and I understand what it's like and you know they do have the things in their ears I've never had one of those before personally I've always had to just 
rely on my ears and uh, like have the speakers kind of around so that I know that I can stay on tune. But it's also failed me before. And now I've got tinnitus because of where I work, basically. And uh, so, so my hearing isn't the best as what it used to be. But I like to try one of those things one of these days. But anyway, poor Malta, because I really liked the song. I liked the performance. I thought she did a really, really good job. So um, San Marino for me was... Um, a step up above from Finland in terms of the song, but, and a lot of people are really upset that Achille didn't make it into the grand final. But if you, he had the best use of stage, absolutely the best use of stage, the whole thing, the main stage, the bottom part of the stage, it wasn't like one or the other. He had stuff going on. There was pyrotechnics. He was riding a mechanical bull. He kissed another boy. There was a lot of things that were going on and it made a great performance. So, Absolutely, my award for best performance itself uh, goes to San Marino for this. However, his vocals were not the best. They were all over the place. Rock songs, you know, it's it's hard. Like, he's got a very gruff voice. He was trying, it, it's obvious they were going for, like, the Meniskins sort of thing. Um, he's He's got the power. He's got the, the strength to be able to do it, but it's just... The delivery when you're in already a semifinal where there's a lot of really tough competition, it can come down to the vocals. And a lot of these people that are voting, this could be the first time they've even heard these songs or watched the performances. So there's a lot of things that you have to weigh in with. And the like I said, stage performance, absolutely uh, bueno. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know Italian. Now, maybe that was Spanish. Uh, anyway, I, I thought it was fantastic. Hands down, best stage use for the second semifinal. Um, but vocally, it was weak for me. And, uh, you know, again, that was another rock song that's gone. Finland's the only one left with a rock song. So we'll see how they do. Uh, and honestly, Senhit did better. Like the song was better, I think. Adrenalina. I loved Adrenalina, as you guys know. I I say it to death. Um, but you know, I, I Adrenalina was a better song. So, moving right along to Cy or to Australia, uh, Sheldon Riley, absolutely the best vocals. Uh, you know, it, it's it's even it's hard to say that now because. All four of the guys that I mentioned earlier, absolutely amazing, amazing vocals. And Sheldon Riley's right up there. Like that that tone, the the range he has is just phenomenal. And you get goosebumps with it. And he's got a, a song that, that proves a really good point. We aren't the same. We are, but we aren't. Um, I think he's on the autism spectrum. I don't know. I could be wrong with that, but I remember reading somewhere something about that. And this is his dream, as it is for many of the performers, to be on this stage. And he did and fantastically. Staging reminded me a little bit of Switzerland from last year with John's Tears. Um, like, but the movement of the stage, him ascending the stairs, pulling off his mask, it was very dramatic, very, very good use, very fantastic performance. So as opposed to San Marino, where the vocals were kind of iffy and, but the, the rest of the thing was like fantastic. Sheldon had everything, like elements of everything that were just amazing. The vocals were there. The performance was there. It was absolutely amazing fodder for the judges, for the people like Eurovision darling right there, right in lights. So good job. Uh, this this performance absolutely blows uh, Montaigne out of the water from last year. No offense meant at all. Uh, her voice is unique as well, but it makes her sound super pitchy all over the place, um, whereas this one was just so flawless and on point. So good job. Cyprus was probably the biggest upset. I really liked Cyprus' song a lot, but... As soon as she started singing, I could tell she was nervous. The nerves were in her voice and she was pitchy. Um, the, you know, she got a little bit better as the performance went on. But again, you have to be in your A game on this. It's a competition and it's a huge one. It's probably the world's biggest singing competition ever. And nerves can hit you and it sucks. It really does because you can deliver amazing performances in rehearsals and in music videos in the studio. And, but all it takes is that little bit of pressure and just having an off moment and it can get you. And I think that's what happened here. But the song is so pretty and 
I, you know, I, Cyprus, good job. I'm really, really sorry that you didn't get in, but I can see why. There, there was that neat little uh, staging with, I think it was a shell, a seashell in the background and could have done amazingly, but them's the breaks, unfortunately. Um, Ireland's up next. I've not been a fan of this song, really. I mean, it, it's fine. It's okay. Maps by Leslie Roy was far better, far, far better. But one thing that I would love to see Ireland consider in the future is going back to their Celtic roots, going to those, like the, the voice, for example, by Emer Quinn, bring Emer Quinn back, you know, um, another one that I don't understand. I think it was 2014. How is it that Emily DeForest for Denmark won with a kind of Celtic style song, but Ryan Dolan came dead last with an absolutely amazing, also Celtic style song. Like I, I don't understand it, but anyways, Ireland's last win was 1996, two, three, four. Yeah, 1996, I believe, with The Voice. And I I would love to see Ireland make it back into the winner's circle. It didn't happen with this one. This song is very bland, very regular radio fodder. I mean, it's going to do great on the, on the radio, I'm sure. It's a typical um, song about female empowerment, which is great. And again, I'm not I'm not shooting it down there. Just the song itself, it's just kind of it's everyday sort of stuff. And I just there, there's other entries too. one other one that did make it in, which I'll talk about that also to me was just like a really big head scratcher because while the vocals were good, it was like this is such a, a blase meh song. But anyway, North Macedonia circles. So this one, not a you know, again, this was such a blah performance i i am so sorry i hate to say that but like there was nothing that stood out about it she was on stage by herself which is fine a lot of the camera a lot of the focus falls on you as the sole person on stage the sole singer and everything and that can really hinder the performance sometimes and it sucks but you know good try uh it was a, a good song but just and there were you know her voice is very unique and it's it comes across pitchy sometimes but at the same time it kind of works with how she sings so i was sitting there and there were many times i was just kind of on that edge of hmm okay hmm okay hmm okay and perhaps that could have just drawn people the wrong way uh, if they if they felt the same way like if they were hearing it so I don't know. Anyway, good, good try, North Macedonia. Very different from last year as well. Estonia, the only country song, like actual country, Wild West style one, the sepia tones. Th this was similar to what Portugal did last year, where they started with the black and white. And again, that's really the only thing I liked about the that song last year. But uh, this year, Estonia awesome i am so glad that he made it in again like i said one of the strongest male voices this year as well and just an amazing performance he really used the stage he got the audience involved he ran around he he was by himself too but he actually utilized the stage properly and the camera angles and stuff whereas north macedonia wasn't as as engaging i would say but estonia i'm so glad to see they got in and i wish estonia would have made it into the grand final last year too because ugu Sivis song oh really really like that song too but this one is a standout one it's different from all the others as well sometimes that's all it takes We'll see what happens here. And I think Estonia's numbers are going up or the odds and stuff too. Romania, another really, really strong um, entry. But like for me, it was going to come between Romania and Israel. They're very, very similar. The fabulousness of it, the the dance, the, the vocals, both of them were super, super strong. The fact that Romania made it in and Israel didn't isn't entirely a surprise like i said there might be pol politics involved here and there i don't know but romania's song this year was my, or performance at least at the semi-final was a lot stronger than roxon's was last year um so you know I'm, I'm i'm happy for them i put down on my my notes from last time that romania would probably make it in and they did so kudos to them it's a fun song and you know there's that one part where he dances with the girl and he dances with the guy and it just i don't know it's, it's just it's a great great performance so and it's another one that kind of gets stuck in your head so i'm glad for them poland this is so polarizing for me so 
a lot of my friends really like this song, really like River. It's an interesting song. It's a haunting song. And it's uh, one, my one friend had said before, it's the style of music they would use in like, um, oh, what's that show called? Lucifer. But there's a disconnect and it's still there in my mind. And this is probably just me. I'm, I'm sure I'm the only one that's like this, where his voice doesn't match the song. He's got a beautiful voice. He's got a fantastic operatic voice. But it's like there's something that's just off. And I can't put my finger on it. And I think I like that because it's it keeps you guessing, really, looking at it in a positive light. And no, but the song is, is very, very well done. So so very, very much kudos um, to Ackman, I think is how you pronounce his name. Ackman, Ackman, I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. Don't come for me, please. <laughs> but I, I'm, I, I'm excited. I, I figured Poland would make it in, and they did. I am so sad for Montenegro because I love this song. This is the song that I connected with probably the most of any other one, simply because I lost my father to COVID, uh, in January, and. Uh, the lady that was performing this song lost her mother to COVID, and that's what the song is about: how it attacks your airwaves and uh, your air, yeah, airways, and just trying to breathe. I mean, you, the air is what they need. The air is what they breathe. They'll die without it. It's unforgivable. And she delivered such great vocals. She gives me Roslana vibes. Like just her look reminds me of Roslana and also. Leela from Doctor Who, Tom Baker's Doctor, the fourth Doctor, just, just got that look to her. That, that's immediately what popped into my head was pretty sure the character's name was Leela before Romana came. Um, and just, I loved the song. It was a very pared down performance, though. So it was really just her on stage, just kind of like these statues in the background, just but on like screen. So uh, maybe it was because the performance overall the staging wasn't incredibly engaging and she had that big like circle i don't know if it was meant to be a halo or just just a, a piece there like with all the lights and stuff but she had a beautiful dress on and i thought it was a a very solid performance vocally and i'm just so sad that montenegro didn't make it into the grand final so this next one is the one that i was mentioning earlier where it's kind of like it's i don't know how it made it into the grand final i'm just going to say it and that is belgium um this song i guess is kind of it's been called jury fodder and that means that like or darling jury darlings and it's just it hits all the things that a lot of the juries like to see it's a very polished style song it's something that is for radio friendly um the gentleman performing it has a lot of swagger he's he's really he's great on stage and his vocals are are fantastic, but at the same time, it was a it was a meh performance. When you have like all these other ones with like pyrotechnics and and all this other stuff, and so I I mean I could see why they, why Belgium made it in, but at the same time, I was just I would I would have switched out either Israel for Belgium or Montenegro for Belgium, or even well no Cyprus no yeah I'd probably go with that. Um, or even San Marino, honestly. I mean, I'd go as far to say that, but I would probably put Israel or Montenegro in there first. That's just my own opinion. Uh, next up, everybody's darling winner of the OGAE award uh, and one of the top contenders to possibly win Eurovision this year, Cornelia Jacobs from Sweden with Hold me closer although you leave before the sunrise I'll be bleeding but don't you mind, I'll be fine Though it kills me, I found the right one at the wrong time But until the sunrise, will you just hold me tight? Yeah, I messed that up, I'm sorry. But I love the song. It's catchy. It's it's a love song. It's a uh, a forlorn love song. It's a ballad style. It's very broad, like you know, minimal. She's got that big green screen in the background that also turns red. There's the color aspect. She's barefoot, which Leslie Roy had mentioned before. A lot of winners have been. Laureen was like that when she won for Sweden. So will we see Eurovision Malmo next year? Who knows? Uh, it might be a different uh, city in Sweden as well, but I think they've done it in Malmo before. So, but Sweden, 
excellent performance as always. I love the rawness of her voice. Uh, again, I get Stevie Nicks style vibes from her. Um, Bonnie Tyler, like, you know. And Reddy is no longer in the running for the grand final. So Cornelia kind of takes the uh, reins as the sole gruff kind of like uh, raspy, raspy female voice in there. And I think she has a really, really good chance. She's got amazing stage presence. She's very sultry. Uh, costume is perfect. Like just it works out great. The, the music is perfect. It crescendos, crescendos at the proper areas and it leads for an epic sounding song she did great performance absolutely fantastic i have nothing bad to say about her at all and that brings us to the last performance of the evening the czech republic now czech republic's song uh we are we are domi and the song is lights or, or where are you now lights off i think it was lights off they did a neat thing when they said turn the lights off and the, it just the whole stage went dark and then it came back on i like that little things like that can really draw you in but the vocals were all over the place. So this is another one that, you know, it had an interesting staging, um, but it just felt like her vocals were on the tip of just, like they, they went a little bit off, they went a little bit on, and there was like a, a weird backing, kind of like what Norway had when they, uh, I don't know what was going on with that one. It was just strange. I hadn't heard that backing before. Um, but anyway, uh, Czech Republic made it in good for them uh it's it's a fun song the music video is really neat it's very matrixy style and uh but the the performance on stage is pared down a little bit from that but there is a lot of lights there's uh the state there's the other band members on the stage and then plus the lead singers so i hope that she does a little bit better vocally at the grand final and um i don't think it's going to be a top 10 contender but who knows? I mean, things can change a lot in a couple of days. Now we've seen bits and pieces of every performance. And I say bits and pieces because we haven't watched the full lives yet of Spain, Germany, France, Italy, or uh, England, UK. But we've seen little snips of them. So, yeah. So that is it for the second semifinal. As, of course, I mentioned, we have the qualifiers for the grand final. Belgium, Czech Republic, Azerbaijan, Poland, Finland, Estonia, Australia, Sweden, Romania, and Serbia. So now I'm going to pull up another thing here. And uh, we're going to look at the grand final running order here. So I just have to make a quick little adjustment here. Forgive me. Let's see if we can get this to fit in frame a little bit. There we go. I think that's going to work. Okay. This is the announced running order for the uh, grand final, which will be taking place on Saturday, of course. And let's just let's kind of sort this out. There we go. More centered and stuff. So you can see it above me here. Um, Czech Republic. Now, somebody pointed something out here that was interesting. I guess 2016, 2017, 2018, and now 2022, the last performer in the second semifinal ends up being the first performer in the grand final. That's interesting there. So Czech Republic finished off semifinal two, and they are starting the grand final off. Romania will be number two, followed by Portugal and Finland and Switzerland. Now that's going to be interesting because you have like this... Uh, kind of uh big song to start with another fun kind of dancey song then you kind of bring it down a little bit to a more pared down song and then you go into the rock song and then you have the really slow kind of song and then we go into france which brings us that ethnic realness with Fulin, and i'm so excited about this this will be the first one of the big five I love Hulin so much. It's an amazing song. It's sung in Breton from Brittany area of France. I wish them the absolute best. I'm so excited for that. Norway follows them with uh, Before That Wolf Eats My Grandma. Give that wolf a banana. Give that wolf want your grandma. Yum, yum. I love that song. I love the dance. I wish them the best. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And then we have Armenia with Snap. And that song is really cute, too. It's got a really nice stage. It's got all the paper stuff in there. It's it's immersive. And it's a it's a nice kind of flowy song. So there you go. It kind of brings things down a bit. Italy, or sorry, yeah, Italy is the next of the big five. And uh, we've got uh, Mahmoud and Blanc 
Blanco? Yeah. And uh, that's going to bring the speed down again even more, like kind of a, a ballad style song. And it is a favorite to win, of course. So we'll see what happens there. Will Italy be hosting the Eurovision Song Contest twice in a row? Hmm. Ireland's done it three times. We'll see what happens. Up next is the next of the big five, and that is Spain. Uh, Chanel has been a front runner since uh, Slow Mo came out. It's a sexy song. It's very sultry. It's very flamenco. It's all over the place. It's fun. And it has all of the elements. Her dancing is impeccable. Her singing is great. They've got a really good chance, I think. Netherlands. So we're going from like that down a little bit in terms of the speed of the song, but it is a haunting song and it is very, very well done. S10 does an amazing job. It just pulls you right in and I, I love them. Next up is Ukraine, which is also a favorite to win. They've apparently, with the betting odds anyway, they've kind of gone over the 50% mark. Again, I have mixed feelings on this myself because I can't help but think that a lot of it has to do with people just um, wanting to vote for them because of what's going on in the country. But the song is also very different. It's got a mix of folk and like um, EDM style and rap. And so it, it's an interesting fusion of of music of different music styles and i do enjoy that i like seeing mixes of things so you know what good good luck to you ukraine we'll see what happens i don't know like for me i think the top three potential winners are going to be between the ukraine uh sweden and italy like they just seem to be on the top all the time so it could go any of those ways and sweden's always been a bit of what they call the dark horse whereas italy and um, Ukraine have kind of been up there for a while. UK has even been mentioned a little bit, but I still don't think they're going to make it to the top. I think maybe top 10 this year, but who knows. If UK get zero points this year, as much as I don't care for the song myself, it is a good song. And like, obviously the amount of press it's getting and people saying, you know, this is our best chance. If they get zero again this year, you know something's going on and it's probably politically oriented and it probably has to do with the fact that uh, there's the split going on with the UK. So uh, anyway, enough about that germany the next one of the big five uh an interesting song i didn't know that the guy was actually part american too american german um i like this song as opposed to belgium i you know they're kind of similar in some ways but there's just something about this song that i do like i like the words to it the lyrics really listening to it the way he delivers it but it and it is radio friendly but it is it could be considered kind of a meh but i haven't seen his full performance i just know there's a lot of instruments on stage with him and i'm wondering if he's playing all of them because that would probably be the key difference right there lithuania i've again you know monica lou good job um i don't care for the song it's a very like uh, da 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 sentimente. Da, 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 da. So it's got the sultriness to it, like um, hold me closer. But at the same time, it's kind of just I don't know. I, I mean, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Azerbaijan again, one of the strong vocalists. Um, and I don't think they're gonna make it as a top 10 though just watching the performance but he has a great voice and uh, definitely well deserved to be into the grand final uh we have belgium um again i'm just i just i don't know i don't know and you know looking at the flags we have black yellow red and then germany's black red and yellow so similar but kind of it's kind of different a little bit too um funny that the songs are kind of in the same sort of idea like i don't know in my mind they are but anyway Greece die together. Uh, it's, it's okay. It, again, it wasn't one of my choices to make it into the grand final, but it's, uh, you know, she's got a good performance. I liked the effects that we saw in semifinal one, looking down at the stage with all the stuff coming out of the chairs or whatever. So, you know, a lot of people do like it. it it's a contender for top 10, possibly. Iceland, uh, very interesting that they did make it into the grand final, and I don't I don't fault them for it. I mean, it's an interesting song. It's another pared down kind of one. It's in Icelandic. Um, it's it's 
it holds your interest and the girls work well together in tandem in unison and they are sisters so you know what good luck to you iceland moldova i love moldova the they had the crowd just on their feet and just enjoying it i could see them getting a top 10 finish if moldova won eurovision 2022 that would be absolutely amazing i mean it'd be like a netta win like when she won for toy um but like they're so engaging and their their energy level is off the charts and i appreciate that they put on a good show the vocals are great it's a fun song it gets stuck in your mind they had they have all the elements there and they put on the best performance along with the Kalush, Kalush Orchestra and the uh, uh, City Zeni. Even though I didn't care for th those other songs as much, the performances were definitely amazing in semifinal one and they stole the show. Um, Sweden. Now, like, this is the thing. Like, we, we have a whole bunch of really strong entries like to finish off the show. So Sweden... In the second part of the goal or the grand final, and a lot of people say that if you're in the first part, you don't have as good of a chance as if you are in the second, because then it's fresh on people's minds when they're voting, especially with 25 entries, and you got to go through all 25 of them. Semifinals, it's only 17 and 18. Here we have 25, which is really only a few more, but it's still a lot to sit through, right? And yes, they do break them up, but so Cornelia has a fantastic chance. I love her. I love her performance. Is solid entry, solid song, solid vocals, amazing. Good luck. Absolutely good luck. I would be so happy if Sweden won. Australia, again, Sheldon Riley, amazing vocals. The song is great. The staging is fantastic. He's got all the elements there. And uh, if Australia were to win, which I don't think is necessarily going to happen, but if Australia does win, there's a caveat that I've read about, and I could be wrong, but I, I, I mean, it makes sense to me that if they win, they cannot host it. And it would probably be the same if Canada was to enter and win instead, because it's one thing for the Australian delegation to fly to Europe, but to have everybody in Europe fly to Australia or to everybody in Europe to fly to Canada, if, again, if assuming this happens in the future, it would be a lot. And so it would make more sense for Australia to pair up with one of the big five countries, uh, Germany, UK, France, Spain, or um, Italy, and, uh, and have it hosted there. So hasn't happened yet. Could this be the year? I don't know. But Australia, super, super, super strong. United Kingdom, again, this song is not one that's on my major top of the tops. You know, I, I would put it down more maybe middle or towards the end personally, just on my own tastes. Uh, but it's a strong contender. This is definitely one that a lot of people agree is a strong, strong song for the UK for many, many years. Again, that's not my opinion, but hey. Um, so I I do think that they deserve more than zero points. That's for sure. So if uh, if if there's zero points, then we know something's going on here. So good luck to you, Sam. Poland again, River, great song, weird vocal thing to me that it just doesn't match like his his voice doesn't match the song i don't know that's a weird thing to say but his vocals are strong he's a very very good singer the song is very haunting it's a very very good song i just don't know if the pairing of them together is right in my mind i, I don't know how else to put it i know it sounds terrible Serbia, oh God, like I said, it was a moment when they were announcing who made it into the grand final. And then, you know, Serbia was the last one mentioned. And I was like, you know, she should, as soon as I watched her thing and I, I'm like, she's got everybody involved. It was like Moldova. I knew she was going to make it in. So good, good luck, uh, Constructa. Maybe she'll pull up and just overtake everybody else. I don't know. It's a unique song. It's fun. It's engaging. Again, Betty Strava. I don't know, it gets stuck in your head. And that's that's a very important thing with songs these days. And the public, of course. And Estonia. Estonia finished off the show, or is going to finish off the show. And again, I love that sepia tone there. He's got, he hits all of the right elements. He's got everybody engaged. It's going to be a great song to finish off the show with. It's strong. Adrenalina finished off the grand final last year. And Estonia is finishing off the grand final this year with, uh, I hope, it is repetitive a bit, you know, I hope, I hope, I hope. But he does get the audience to join in, or at least he did in the second semifinal. So we'll see what happens at the grand final. So will we see a second year in the row win for Italy? Will we see Sweden take on the winning role? Will we see 
who else did I say was the other one? Ukraine. <laughs> And what happens? Where will it be if if Ukraine wins? Like again, I mentioned before, it's it's a weird thing to talk about, but Ukraine's under war right now, under under attack from Russia. What if Russia takes it over? Does that mean? And Russia's been eliminated from Eurovision this year. Like, it's it's weird. Uh, if Ukraine is still standing, would they have anywhere they could really do it? Would would the country have enough money to be able to do, to do it? Would it default to one of the big five? Would it default to the second winner country? Or would Ukraine partner up with one of the big five or, or another country? Who knows? This is like, I think, the first time this has ever happened. So if Ukraine wins, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. So I don't know. It's it, This is a really interesting question and a really interesting year. And I can't wait for Saturday to see what happens. I'm working during the time that the grand final's on, but I'll watch it later and uh, I'll, I'll comment on it as well, too. Um, before I go, I'm just going to mention, too, not related to Eurovision, but I am a performer myself. I have a song called Modest Mansion with a double-decker Venetian carousel that I'm entering in the CBC Searchlight Contest here in Canada. And voting starts May 19th. And it's uh, there's like it just goes until the end of june and uh, so you can vote up to five times a day just check out the cbc searchlight contest and my social media i'll have links to all the stuff there um, i would love your support if you like the song you can check it out on my channel here um, and again i don't have access to professional recording equipment so please keep that in mind i do my best and uh, i just like to have fun with it so all right guys i'd love to hear from you what are your thoughts on the semifinal two what do you think about who's going to win in the grand final if you want to talk about semi-final one i'd love to hear from you as well leave a comment down below and i will see you guys on saturday where we will discuss the grand final and who won at that point and uh, leading up to it i'm i'm just so excited for it i love eurovision so much and i am so grateful to be able to talk about it with you guys so have a wonderful wonderful day